But thank you so much. Um, you're going to be hearing from me a little bit. My name is Salome Garcia, and I am the Policy and Campaigns Manager with the Clio Institute. And then you're going to be hearing from some friendly faces uh, like Megan from Hogan Mead and Silvana Capaldi. And um, I hope that you enjoy this webinar. In the next hour, you're gonna hear a little bit about sustainability for small businesses. And we are also going to be hearing from Hogan, Mead and Silvana on some of the resources that they have for the small business community. And then finally, we are going to have kind of an open networking discussion space so that we can hear people's stories on how they're accommodating to coronavirus and how their, their businesses have been adapting in this new world, because we are going to be providing all of you with a free small resource business kit. Inside of this business kit, you're going to be able to find a ton of different things like marketing resources, um, grant applications and loans that are still accepting small business applications um, all throughout Tampa Bay area, as well as nationwide grants. You're going to be seeing like alliances for local businesses and all types of different resources. So we hope that through the discussion space and networking portion, you're also able to share if you have a need and if your small business could use a resource, that way we kind of know um, the best way that we can help you as well. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you a small presentation that I've prepared. Oops. Uh, okay. Let me try that again. Okay. Okay. So as I mentioned, um, oh, not the right button. Okay. As I mentioned, my name is Salome. I am the Policy and Campaigns Manager with the Clio Institute. There is my email address. And I'll also put my email address later on in the chat in case you all want to contact me. And my presentation is about the climate crisis, which might sound a little bit random to some of you. We're like, we're small businesses. This is a small business webinar. What the heck are we doing talking about climate change? So I'm going to let you know. So the Clio Institute, we are a nonprofit, nonpartisan, science-based organization. We have partnerships with organizations all around the world and the country, such as the CDC, the World Health Organization, NASA, and NOAA. And really, the Clio Institute focuses on communicating um, the most current uh, science impacts and solutions to non-traditional partners all throughout the state of Florida. And so really quickly, this is like the most sciencey slide that you'll see throughout this entire hour. But I just wanted to remind people something that you may remember from middle school or high school or even college, but that's just the basis of all of the work that the Clio Institute does, which is the greenhouse gas effect. So just as a quick reminder, the greenhouse gas effect is a good thing. It is a process where we get energy from the sun, then that energy gets absorbed by our earth and some gets reflected out of our atmosphere. And in that reflection process, greenhouse gases create this blue little bubble around our earth and allow us to keep some of that heat from that outgoing energy. We like the greenhouse gas effect. If it wasn't for the greenhouse gas effect, we would be an icy frozen tundra. But the problem is that too many greenhouse gases are capturing too much heat. And what does that mean? The earth is getting hotter. So hot, in fact, that the past five years have been the hottest on record. And hotter temperatures impact every piece of our lives. Hotter temperatures impact our health, our economy, our immigration. Here in Tampa and St. Petersburg, Florida, we are actually expecting that by 2070, we can have 155 danger days. Danger days are where the temperature is over 100 degrees and it's literally too dangerous for there to be farm workers outside or for kids to play sports or for firefighters to wear their uniforms and turn down fires. Extreme heat has a lot of health repercussions. You have dehydration, heat stroke, you have vector borne diseases that are now more common. And warmer water means more fuel and stronger hurricanes. It also impacts kind of one of the things that our economy depends on the most, which is our tourism. With extreme heat, humidity, hurricanes, floods, beach erosion, that really impacts Florida's tourism. Here in the Tampa Bay area, we have a sea level rise and flooding problem. So you actually see that with just two degrees of warming worldwide, you see the image on the right is all of the sea level rise and flooding that will, that, you know, 
will overwhelm the greater Tampa Bay area and some of the neighborhoods that we live in now won't even be inhabitable. The United States is the second largest polluter in the world, but there are good news, which is that small businesses are a huge part of the solution. One of the things that the Clio Institute loves to do is we work with small businesses so that we can help you capitalize on sustainability. We know that millennials are the largest purchasing generation alive right now, and that 73% of millennials would pay more for sustainable products. You have this new generation of people that are demanding greener goods and greater transparency. And there's also a lot of benefits to being sustainable and going green, like you save money, you get to take advantage of tax incentives, you're just generally providing a healthier work environment, whether it's just you and your small business or whether you have a team of a thousand people. And you just contribute to the sustainability and progress of our communities as well as of our planet. There's a ton of different ways that you can start your sustainability journey as a business owner. The Clio Institute actually works with small businesses to give you free energy audits. So if you're interested in figuring out how much energy your um, business is taking, even if you're just working from your house, what does your paper consumption look like? What does your transportation look like? Where are you getting a lot of your products? We at the Clio Institute would love to meet one-on-one -on -one with you and just help you think through how you can be more sustainable and better yet, how to be able to market your sustainability to make a bigger profit. So thank you so much for coming to our event. You have our flyer on the right. And these are some of the ways, again, that you can get involved with us through Lunch and Learns, which is basically what I just told you. It's like a one-on-one -on -one meeting, or we do presentations in front of entire large businesses where we can show you some of the ways that your business can go green and give you individualized, personalized audits. And you can also support our campaign, the Florida Climate Pledge, which is an education campaign where we kind of uplift the real everyday impacts of the climate crisis. Thank you so much. That's all I had for the Clio Institute. There are a ton of different ways that you can get involved. We hope to be able to work with um, any one of your businesses. And we do involve the business community on a ton of different campaigns. We do community outreach. We do government partnerships. Um, we have a teachers and network of educated teachers and educators in the Tampa Bay area. So if any of these things um, are something that you're interested in, please, you can put your email address in the chat. And then we will make sure to reach out to you. And also you can contact me. I'm going to put my email address on the chat as well. And Katrina, which is another one of our Clio staff, already put her email address on the chat. So you can reach out to her as well. But thank you so much. So now I'm going to turn it over to Megan. Um, but before I do, does anybody have any questions or thoughts that they'd like to share before we continue with our programming? Great. Thank you so much. All righty, Megan, take it away. Thank you, Salo. So, hey, everybody. Thank you very much for taking some time. It's very nice to see some faces that I haven't seen in a really long time, like my cousin Kristen and Jane and Sandy and Sonia. And I don't see the faces, but Adria and Saima. So I just want to thank you guys for joining um, Salo and myself for this presentation. <clears throat> um, if you don't know me, uh, my name is Megan Hogan Tauber, and I'm a small business owner in Tampa. And my local landmarks around the Tampa Bay area are my inspiration for all of my designs that I mainly put on t-shirts, but I put them on other things, pillows and hats and paper products and stickers and things like that. Um, and I use high quality products to print all of the shirts myself. And I also print and apply decor by heat transfer vinyl as well. Um, my kind of tagline is teas for your community because I use different, um, I'm actually gonna share my screen right now because I kind of forgot that I had my slideshow going. So there's that. Um, so, we are a family business because everybody in my family is an artist and even my husband, Steve, who does some interesting artwork himself is an artist. Um, Shop Dog Carmela is a very important and integral employee. She always gets employee of the month. 
Um, the Ybor City Saturday Market is where I do the majority of my business. And the last market that we had was on March 7th. So we are going to be going into about 14 weeks of not having a market each week. Um, so these are some of the designs that my that I make and I print on shirts. So this is our most popular one, Ybor City. It's the smoking rooster. Uh, Ybor City is known for its roosters and cigar rolling. So it's all wrapped up into one tidy little shirt there. Um, they also do yoga in the park over in Ybor City. So this is like my second pop most popular shirt. But some of the other neighborhoods around town are represented in my designs. And as you can see, we're kind of like all about community. So it's teased for your community. <clears throat> um, I have a portion of my business. It's called Perch the Merch Community Giving Program. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that there are three representatives of uh, recipients for my Perch the Merch um, program. Pepin, Glacier, and Frameworks are three of the organizations that I have donated to in the last couple of years. Um, and basically what I do is I choose one local organization, nonprofit, and I donate 5% of my sales for one month, um, several times a year. And unfortunately this year, that's probably not going to happen as often as I would like it to. Um, but in the last four years, I have managed to raise uh, almost $8,000 for several different local organizations. So I wanted to just remind you guys, if anybody is interested in sharing their name, their website, their social media, if you want to do that in the chat room and the, the little chat session, um, go ahead and do that now. Um, this is, I think, a really good platform for everybody to just network and if there's any way that you know I can help any of you or any of you can help somebody else, that would be great. So I think that you know, just make sure that you do that if you're interested. I'm not forcing you to, and I'm not putting you on any weird mailing lists or anything. So, um, so I'm gonna just share this promo code with everybody here. It's adapt15 for 15% off at um, hoganmade.com for any purchases. And this is an unlimited use for anybody who's in this webinar right now. And uh, if anybody else has any specials or discounts or anything that they want to post in the chat session, please do that. So the our kind of our COVID journey. Um, like I said, the last market that we had was on March 7th. And within a week, um, I am also on the Ebor Saturday market board. So within a week, we kind of, you know, flipped around and redid our website really quickly. We added a bunch of vendors. I think there's about 20 different vendors on our ebormarketonline.com website that links directly to a lot of our vendors um, websites so that people that are dedicated and loyal customers at the Ebor market, they would be able to at least purchase their items online from their favorite vendors. Um, <clears throat> and in the following month, we kind of pivoted to, uh, got introduced to Michelle. So um, Michelle is on the call, I believe. Northrop, she is the saucy queen and she makes absolutely delicious sauces. So I highly recommend her sauces, especially the sweet and spicy one. Um, so we hooked up with her through our market manager, Lynn, who was not able to join the call today, but uh, Michelle and Lynn hooked up and said, you know, see, since Michelle had been already delivering boxes of vendor market items every week. I'm not sure exactly when she started it, but it was pretty early on because I saw her on the news within a couple of weeks of the shutdown. Um, <clears throat> so we kind of hooked up with her and that further gave our vendors another outlet to sell their items because she has her set of vendors and we had our set of vendors. So she kind of, we were able to fill a lot of her needs as well. Um, so 
in the upcoming next couple of weeks, in about 10 days, the market will be opening back up um, on June 20th, which is also mom and dad's 50th anniversary. So happy anniversary, mom and dad, early. Um, so that's, again, like another step of this kind of adapting to this new way of life is we are taking all different kinds of precautions to, you know, make the market safer, to make our customers feel safer at the market. So we're going to have all kinds of signage. All of the vendors are going to be required to wear masks. Uh, we're going to have hand sanitizing stations and directional signs to make sure that people are social distancing. Um, so there's a lot of different things that the market and the vendors. So everyone's going to have to be adapting in different ways to, you know, kind of come back from all of this. Um, and I think one of the um, things that I have been reminded of is that as a small business, as a sole proprietor, it's been pretty easy for me to make those changes like in the snap of a finger because I don't have to answer to anyone except for maybe shop dog Carmela. Um, but she's not the decision maker. So I don't really have to listen to her at all. Um, but I can, you know, I was able to in a snap of a finger, just totally go crazy with my social media and paying for advertising and, you know, not having to worry about getting a budget approved or waiting a week to do this or that. I could just, you know, snap my fingers and do it immediately. Um, <clears throat> and as far as coming back to the market, um, I have had this pointed out to me several times by several people that I have a pretty decent foundation of very loyal customers that are constantly coming back to me. So I feel like that is something that's going to allow me to bounce back as a business fairly quickly. Um, so I'm going to now introduce Silvana Capaldi, who is the small business love of my life. Um, she's the owner of the Esperare Group. She is the founding chair of the Tampa Bay chapter of the Alliance of Merger and Acquisitions, and she is a big champion for small businesses. So Silvana, if you would like to take it away for a few minutes and maybe talk a little bit about small business trends in the age of COVID. Absolutely. Well, Megan, first and foremost, thank you for having me. Uh, I am a big fan of yours and also a big thank you for the Clio Institute uh, for having me on the webinar. I do want to share just a little bit how I met Megan. I belong to Leadership uh, Tampa 2020 uh, of Tampa Bay uh, Chamber and uh, I heard Megan in one of the programs that I attended over at the Entrepreneur Collaborative Center. And after I heard her speak about her company, I went up and I asked her, uh, you know, I loved her story and she inspired me. I said, how can I help you? Uh, and we connected from there. I had her come to one of the Alliance events uh, and then connected her to the chamber uh, who then is purchasing her t-shirts uh, with our leadership class 2020. And then uh, here we are, she invited me to attend this. So the power of networking does absolutely work and especially at a time right now when we are in this uh, COVID all together globally. No one sat down I'm sure as a small business owner writing their business plan or what 2020 was going to look like and wrote hey COVID is going to hit. Totally unpredictable. Nobody knew it was coming and hit the small business community. So what do you do in that state? You know, you have to really uh, look at your company and they use the word pivot for a reason today because you do have to pivot. So many companies have uh, changes is inevitable. Uh, when you think of even the depression times, the financial crisis uh, earlier uh, that happened to us, businesses can thrive if they're willing to accept change, rethink how to approach their business and how to get the business out there and continue. So I always put things in buckets for business owners. Are, are you, uh, with this COVID hit, are you missing in action now? Did you just kind of 
don't want to deal with it, not sure with change, and unfortunately those businesses go away? Are you in no man's land, not sure where to go, trying to connect, but kind of lost out there in the mapping? Or are you that business that says, now wait a minute, I need to pivot, I need to reinvent myself, and I need to identify how I'm going to get back out there into the business community. Some companies, as you know, you think of, I think of L'Oreal, a good friend of mine uh, works there. They did the hand sanitizers. You think of the masks. You just have to rethink how you do business. Networking is such a plus. Uh, reaching out to the vendors that you do business with, creating communities like the Clio here where you get together and you promote and you learn and you gain. Uh, that's how things will happen for businesses. They'll survive, they'll thrive, but if you just sit back and you hate change, it's gonna be a tough road and your business won't survive. So uh, I love Megan when she said that to me and she said it's an opportunity for all of us to network. Um, and I don't, I don't wanna talk forever, but I'm certainly open for questions. I help a lot of companies uh, grow and thrive. Uh, I, I just am always amazed with companies how we don't plan for the unpredictable uh, and have that line item there, what if. Uh, so hopefully these are good lessons to learn. Um, people do thrive through difficult times. Um, I always uh, think of myself as that person that is persistent. You gotta be persistent, look for new ways, continue to learn, engage, uh, especially within our own community. Uh, in the Tampa Bay market, and really because we all benefit if we all help each other in the business community to grow. So um, with that, uh, Megan, hopefully I've covered uh, enough so that we can open it up for everybody if you have questions. I could talk forever. I've been uh, on these uh, calls. Uh, you know, you got to change your perspective. You got to have that positive attitude. Uh, connect with people that will help you grow, that will inspire to grow, that will listen to your story. Um, and I, I think for uh, Megan specifically is such a great example of someone that I connected with just with a hello and asking her questions about her business. And I, I did have a t-shirt that she was kind enough to send to me uh, as a result of connecting her with some uh, within the business community, but it was in the laundry, as I, I said to, to Megan, because I wore it the other day. Well, I, like I said, I'll have to get you a backup so that you can <clears throat> always have a clean one. Yeah, that's what I do when I have dirty laundry. I just make myself a new shirt. I, I um, love that. <laughs> I just need to be over. So, <laughs> so um, <clears throat> thank you very much, Silvana. And again, if you guys have, if anybody has any questions or if they want to chime in, please feel free. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I think that Mary. Mary Elizabeth might be in charge of muting, unmuting people. I, like I, like Salome said, I can't chew gum and present hey, at the same time. I believe um, Gitelio, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your name, had a question. He put it in the chat. He said, this is specifically for family biz. He wants to know if their workers are unionized. So if, if, say that again, I'm sorry. If their workers are uni unionized. For family businesses? For family biz. Um, I can put him off of mute. So perhaps he could say it himself. I just asked him to unmute. You guys wanted me to unmute? Yeah, um, just if you wanted to ask your question that was in the chat. Okay. okay, well, I guess we could go on then. Yeah, we can come back to that. Um, <clears throat> I was going to go ahead and share the small business resource kit um, that Salome and um, I think Mary Elizabeth helped put together. I shared it in the chat earlier. Um, gonna see if I can get there this it is. up here. There you go. 
And like I said, I'll share this in the chat. So if anybody is interested in grabbing this, um, there's a ton, a ton, a ton of really good resources in here from grants to, you know, government uh, resources and other alliances. So these are just some of the programs that um, they put together. So also, this will be available. Yep. Also, too, um, if anybody is on the call right now that would like to share maybe their experience as a small business owner um, during this time, maybe how you have adapted to this immediate change, um, you know, your story, it may be um, really impactful and, and really um, useful for other people on the call. So. Just wanted to shout out that. Thank you. You know, Emma, to your point, that's so true. Sharing the stories is key. And, you know, as we know, the hospitality industry was hit really bad. And there were restaurants around here that pivoted and kind of promoted themselves in a different way through uh, digital media. I think that's so important. Uh, and to be creative about it. I can think of Forbici, which is in our marketplace uh, he gave out rolls of toilet paper with the Forbici logo uh, <laughs> around it, but it made you remember them. You know, you've got to you've got to change things. So I love that. If anybody would like to share their stories, so that uh, I agree, we could learn from from each and every one of you. Yeah, there's um, <clears throat> somebody actually had a question. Um, starting to telework from my office job was a dream. What was it like transitioning your physical small business to all online? Uh, for me, it sucked <laughs> because I do most of my business at the market, at the Ebor market, once a week. Um, <clears throat> so that's my one day for me to sell a lot of shirts. And the other place my other outlets are retail stores so everybody was completely shut down so my online business it's steady but it's slow because that's not my main source so just getting my social media out there uh you know and just filling up social media like crazy to get the word out and paying for some advertising and boosting posts on facebook was a huge thing for me to look at and think about um, and I know that I don't want to put Michelle on the spot, but Michelle Northrup is the saucy queen who yeah. was starting to deliver the, uh, market boxes. So, I mean, that was like faster than the speed of lightning that she did that. So I don't know if Michelle would want yeah, to chat on, a little I'm bit. On. I would, I'd love to talk about it a little bit. Awesome. Thank you so much, Megan, for inviting me to be on Absolutely. this Zoom and to talk a little bit about it. So when the um, COVID-19 came in and uh, the city and the county and the state said, you know, no more events and markets, I was in the same situation as Megan. I also run several markets and big events in the Tampa Bay area. And I had over 200 vendors that all of a sudden had zero income. And it really, really weighed on my mind. And all of a sudden, like, uh, it was one of those three in the morning kind of ideas where I thought, well, maybe I could bring the markets to the customers that can't leave their house. So we've been doing it now. We're um, working on week 14. So it was literally like an instant idea I figured out Shopify uh, the next day. I contacted my vendors and said, okay, here's our budget, what do you got? And we, our first week, our goal was, okay, if we could do 20, uh, I think you know, that'll help everybody because at a market you typically sell you know, 20 or 30 items. So I thought, if I can at least get 20 sales, all of these vendors in this box will have an income instead of no income. So the very first week, we almost doubled that. We were at 39. And then we were on, um, I think it was Fox News. And then we were on ABC Action News. And then the boxes went up to um, 70 a week. 
And it's just been a whirlwind of goodness for these vendors. We partnered with the Ebor market. So it was my vendors, their vendors, and we just tried to bring income to my local vendors. And it's just been really awesome. At first, my goal was to do it for the vendors because that's where my heart is. And then I started getting all of this wonderful feedback from the customers that said, hey, I'm in my house for weeks and the only thing I look forward to is when this amazing box arrives packed with goodies from the farmer's market, including fresh produce and soaps and dish towels soon to be from Megan and all these great items in the box. It was what they looked forward to for the whole week. So it's really cool that it was like a win, 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 win all the way around. Hey, Michelle, yeah. this, this is Silvana. I know you from uh, Working Women and I love your stuff. Thank you. And oh, real quick mentioning Working Women, I was able to donate so far over $2,000 to Working Women of Tampa Bay. You're $5 awesome. of every box goes to the Working Women of Tampa Bay Foundation. On the foundation. So, and yeah. that, then Michelle, that's there to help businesses, small businesses, women. Correct. So that's to offer seed money to yeah. women owned businesses in the Tampa Bay area. Yeah. It, it's, it's an awesome uh, organization, but kudos to you Thank for you. using that uh, marketing. Uh, I mean, change is inevitable when you think back when the websites earlier on, you couldn't even pay online and now you can. There's, you've got to be adaptable. So it, you just kind of pivot, that word pivot. Yeah. There. Yep. Thank you so yeah. much. And I have to give a shout out to the market boxes because they are totally amazing we are getting one with pizza dough and pasta and mm -hmm. tomato sauce we've been getting fresh veggies yes it's amazing and i Thank was you. mad at myself because i forgot to order it last week but we're getting yeah. it this weekend so i'm very excited so saucyqueen.com if you're in the tampa areas and please, make it please, tell please. them about the special that you have for the following week when you'll be in so I'm going to have um, my dish towels. I've got some very fancy tea towels because I'm very fancy um, that are going to be in the boxes next week. So saucyqueen.com. And then Michelle, do you have a special that's going on? Do um, I have the code uh, for you and for anybody who's, who's on today. It's free delivery and you just need to use the code Hogan's Made, which is nice. Megan's company. Nice. Hogan Made. Yeah. Singular. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting this in here. <clears throat> um, so thank you very much, Michelle. That was really, I thank really you. appreciate you being on the call and sharing that with us because that's a, a big, big thing. So um, I think the next portion of, oh, I have a, there's a question here for you, Michelle. Do you sure. see the market boxes continuing after COVID? Yes, um, our market, we've already, we started last week. Um, and so we are going to continue as long as there's still a, um, a need for it. This week um, was a huge, huge, huge turnout. So we're, we're gonna continue because not everybody can go to the farmer's market every Saturday or Sunday. So we will be continuing this. Yeah. And then are you still accepting other uh, new vendors? Is the, Always. The app? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll that's put, another I'll thing. A, my, um, my information in, I just need somebody, if they're interested to send me their photos of their products and their wholesale versus retail pricing. Okay. Perfect. So that's saucyqueen.com, everybody. Yes. Make sure that you. And everybody should in. come get sauce. Yes, I totally agree with that. <laughs> you can't smell what's in my Yeti, right? <laughs> well, Megan, uh, Megan, I do want to share, you know, uh, I think, who was it? Solomon showed the slide earlier. Millennials, I mean, the, all the generations are buying everything online. So I would definitely uh, continue on that path. I, I mean, that's how I buy everything as well, too, now. From a millennial approach as well, I think it's really important to focus on the environmental impact of shopping locally. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
well, you know, they'll still be able to get the easiness of shopping online while also supporting the environment by not buying anything from China and as well as their local economy. So I just wanted to thank you all for keeping your local economies afloat and contributing to the health of the environment by being local businesses. Yes, good point. Absolutely. And especially now that, you know, I'm, I'm definitely guilty of it, but Amazon is so easy these days mm -hmm. because you can get whatever you want right away anytime you want it and you know there's because of COVID there hasn't been that opportunity to go out and get you know your local favorite things it's always you know now it's just a totally different situation mm -hmm. um yeah so <clears throat> Um, so the next portion of this call is very exciting. Um, so I have chosen three questions and the first three correct answers to come in in the chat wins a fabulous Hogan made t-shirt. So are we ready? Okay, the first question is, what is the official Florida State flower? First three people to get this. Okay, we have three winners on that one. All right. Designated in 1996, what is the official Florida State butterfly? And then the last question is, what is the hottest temperature ever recorded in the state of Florida? <clears throat> so the first three people to get all three right. All right, has everybody had a chance to chime in and answer? All right, so the first answer is the orange blossom. The second one is the zebra long wing. And the third one is 109 degrees, which it feels like is the temperature all the time in summer. <clears throat> so if you got ACA, um, send me your t-shirt size and you can email me your address if you don't want to share it with everybody. So ACA, if, you, if that's your answer, then send me your shirt size. So who do we have here? Did anybody get ACA? No? Nobody? <laughs> oh my God, you guys are the worst Floridians ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> That's no excuse, Steve. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to share on my screen. This is all of my information. Um, please go ahead and follow me if you're not already following me on social media, Facebook and Twitter, which I really don't use that often, um, and Instagram. And if, does anybody have any other stories that they would like to share? Anybody? Megan, this is yeah. uh, Silvana. Uh, from my perspective, was the opportunity of you and I meeting, was that beneficial to you? Oh my God, absolutely. <laughs> Look at Steve's face, he's cracking up because I talk about you all the time. <laughs> 
okay. I just I just want to open that up for people, especially on the Alliance of Merger and Acquisition. It is a platform where, as you know, you came and we um, love to educate business owners and we bring them together. And so uh, obviously we've had to pivot. We're doing our all, all of ours through webinar now uh, coming up in June. But I do want to invite the business owners uh, to attend. Uh, as you know, Megan, you had shared, I, I hate to steal your thunder. You, I'll let you tell it. You met some people. Yeah, I actually, <clears throat> this was an event that was held at the Entrepreneur Collaborative Center, which uh, presents the One Million Cups program presented by the Kauffman Foundation. And it's every Wednesday at 9 a.m. If you know me, you've probably heard me talk about it at least 18,000 times um, because I feel like it is a really good tool for small businesses to present. You have five minutes to present your business and then you have 25 minute question and answer session. Um, so if you're having an issue, say I wanted to open up a retail store, I would not know where to start. I mean, I would not have a clue. So this would be a great platform to go to, to kind of ask the community, other business owners um, and professionals for help on how do I get started doing something like that. So Lynn Croson, she is the market manager for the Ybor City Market, but she is also um, works at the ECC. And she invited me to give a kind of a mock presentation, but it was a real presentation to the Leadership 2020 group and um, Silvana asked me no less than 400 questions, which I loved, and immediately came right up to me afterwards and said, we need to connect. Um, immediate, almost immediately after that, she invited me to the Pomacia Golf and Country Club for an award ceremony, and um, the mayor was there, so she presented one of my shirts to the mayor, uh, Jane Castor, and I put one in there for her little dog too. Uh, <laughs> um, and from that came a gigantic shirt order that I will be working on tomorrow and the next day that she hooked me up with. So that was enormously beneficial, especially in this time because 14 weeks off of work, you know, not bringing in any money, that's kind of a problem. So any job like that at this point is a blessing for me. So I appreciate everything that you've done and all of your insight. And I, I, Megan, I wanted you to share that because I offer that up to the businesses in our community as well. If I can be of a resource or uh, offer a hand up, up to you and, and guidance like I did for Megan, I want you to know I am here. I, I am a business owner myself coming from Canada. I got here owning businesses and I sold uh, that business and sold other businesses as well. So um, networking is key and Megan will tell you that, you know, coming to that event, um, you get, there were a lot of business owners there, um, and a lot of people that uh, she can still connect with. So uh, I love that you invited me to uh, share that story, uh, but also share that I, I am here. I'm a big fan of our ecosystem, the Tampa Bay market and a big promoter promoter of local business all the way through. I have a really quick question. Um, so I'm from South Florida. I don't know if you mentioned that you guys implemented this in the Tampa Bay area, but down in South Florida for our local farmers markets during, during COVID, we actually had a delivery service. So yep. everyone that was interested in, did you guys have that? Nothing, see, not, go, go ahead. Yeah, so it was a delivery service that people could choose their favorite vendors from farmer's markets and it would be delivered to their house. I don't know if you guys mentioned that you did that before, but just out of curiosity, was that something you guys had during COVID? Yeah, that was kind of part of what we were just talking about. Um, Michelle Northrup runs a market up in North Tampa. And as soon as the, as soon as the lockdown happened, I mean, she was jumped right on it and within a week had you know, hundreds of vendors and was able to live to deliver tons of market boxes that she put together with all of her different vendors from her market. And then we later hooked up with the Ebor Saturday market. So she kind of opened up a big door for a lot of our vendors as well. <clears throat> and I'll be getting mine tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> 
because it has oh. pizza dough in it. Oh my God, I can't wait. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Grateful uh, that you all are doing that and engaged on this call. Uh, like I said, Megan, I'm grateful that we met and I'm her biggest uh, fan. Well, thank you so much, Slavana. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your thoughts with everybody. Um, so I think, um, do we want to turn it over to somebody from the Clio Institute to kind of start wrapping things up? If anybody does, if anybody has anything else to say, I mean, we still have a few minutes, but um, I think that we can maybe touch back on the reminder for the audit and the lunch and learn. I think those are gonna be some good resources for people on this call too. Yeah, guys, definitely. Um email Katrina um, if you're interested in a lunch and learn um, session to maybe get your business a little more sustainability or uh, oriented and then also be sure to check out that resource kit that we put together for you guys um, it has everything from national grants um, and then stuff that's more local there's a Pinellas County grant that's on there um, the application for that uh, for $5,000 closes June 30th and then there's also one for the city of St. Pete in case your business operates out of St. Pete and then a bunch of other stuff there is a resource web page on there for um, women business owners and also minorities um, there is a Tampa Bay black owned business website that you can check out as well um, so there's a lot of really great stuff on that resource kit and um, please let us know if there's any any resource that we can provide as the Clio Institute for your business, um, please let us know how we can fill that gap. And I'll go ahead and send some of the uh, links that I have uh, as well, Emma. Thank you, yeah, that would be super, super Thank resourceful and really helpful. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I just went ahead and I shared the file that has um, all of that information on there. The, I know that Hillsborough County is currently working on a new grant. Um, I haven't gotten word that it's com the application is completed yet, but that's something that as soon as that comes out, I'm going to be jumping in line for the first person in line on that one. Um, but I will share that information on my Facebook page. So if you're interested and you don't follow me on Facebook right now, go ahead and do that because I'll be sharing that information via Facebook. So whenever that comes out, should happen in the next week or so. And then um, I also wanted to just say, I think it's appropriate to say in this call, um, you know, in Tampa Bay, we have a, a really large uh, community, a transient community, like a lot of tourism. And um, I lost my job uh, to COVID. Um, I was a travel agency, a travel agent with a really small company. And I don't think that they're gonna survive um, this pandemic, but um, I did learn from that experience that you should never leave your customers in the dark. You should never, um, you know, the, the loyal clients that you have, whether you're a, a travel agency or just like, you know, a farmer's market vendor, who, whatever you, um, whatever industry you're in, um, definitely send out like a mass email just saying, thank you for your support. You know, we're still here, like just to make your presence known on an online platform. And also use hashtags like postpone, don't cancel, or brighter days ahead, or see you soon. So things like that, um, that really get people kind of hopeful for the future. So I just wanted to put that out there. That's something that I experienced um, working for a little agency. So thanks everybody. Hey, hey Emma, I'm gonna put it out there. Connect with me and let me see how I can help you. For sure, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so if anybody has anything else to add, um, now would be the time to do it. If you have any questions, um, again, I'll put my email in the chat. If anybody has any. Oh, go ahead. 
I was just going to say if anybody has any questions or wants to be connected with anybody that was on the call, um, you know, feel free to email me or get in touch with uh, the Clio Institute and we can connect you if, if somebody, you know, struck your fancy and you'd like to hook up with them, you know, I think this is a good way to do that. Yeah, and all the resources that the Clio Institute offers is completely free. So we would love to help you out in any way we possibly can. Oh, nice. Well, I was also going to say, if you want to connect with me, I'm easy on LinkedIn. You can, my name is there, so I don't have to spell it for you all. I know it's a challenging name. And then if you click on contact info, everything is there. My email, my cell uh, number, uh, please feel free to connect with me that way. And also I was going to add that we have recorded this entire webinar. So if you guys want to review it, we'll be sending out an email um, with the emails that you guys provided when you registered. So, and we'll also include the resource kit that way, you know, everything isn't forgotten once you leave today. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for uh, collecting all that information because I've pretty much forgotten everything right now, so. <laughs> All right, does anybody else have anything to add or? Stay positive, guys. Yeah. <laughs> don't forget to smile. Thank you so much. It'll all be over at some point. We don't know when, know, but right? just stay positive, <laughs> stay strong, stay brave. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining. I appreciate everybody taking their time to do this. Love you all. Thanks for putting this together. Yeah, no problem. Oh my God, your faces! I miss you guys. Yeah, I know. It'll be soon. It'll be soon. I know. All right, guys. Thank yeah. you. And thank you, and thank you Clio Institute. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. Ciao, as we say in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Silvana. Bye bye.